I'm sure like me, you're finding that in this new remote world, you spend a lot of your day scheduling meetings, whether it's people within your company or another company that you're working with. This causes quite a lot of frustration sometimes where you're sending a lot of emails backwards and forwards to find the perfect time that everyone can meet. Well, that's why I'm excited for this video because we're going to be talking about Microsoft Find Time, an add-in into Microsoft Outlook that can allow you to send out different options as a poll. People can select the time that works for them and then your meeting can automatically be set up. So let's dive in and see how this can help you speed up setting up meetings. Okay, so we're here on the Find Time website and really before we go too far, I just want to mention that this only works on work or school accounts. So you've got to be coming from your business account or if you're in education. This does not work and is not supported for any of your personal accounts. So with that being said, the reason I'm here is I just wanted to show you, look, if you're on the website and you click install for free here, it gives you all the details you need on how to get this installed in your Outlook. And it's going to be installed either from the web. So if you're on Outlook for web, you can easily install this or if you're on Outlook desktop, which is how I'm going to show the installation, or if you want to know how to install this for everyone in your organization, this is where you want to go to get the details. So let's head over to Outlook on the desktop to see how to get this going. Okay, so we're now here in Outlook desktop. Let's go ahead and get the find time add-in installed. So to be able to do this, all you need to do is just go to the top here in the ribbon and do get add-ins. And then from the add-ins page, we're just gonna search the top right here for find time. And I'm just gonna hit enter. And then we can see the add-in for find time. So I could have just gone ahead and click add. If you wanna learn more about it, of course you can just select it and read about it. We're just gonna go ahead and select add. And once it's added, I'm just gonna close down this add-in page. And that's all there is to it. And we can already see at the top right here, it's grayed out right now saying, reply with meeting poll from find time. So when it comes to find time, there's two ways that you can start sending a poll back. The first way is if you've got an email, so from, for example, we've got Megan here who's saying, hey, look, we wanna discuss Teams training. Let's get a meeting. Well, from that way, now it's kind of lit up. I could go ahead and reply to this email with a meeting poll, or the other way of doing it is we can go to new email. And now from this new email, first of all, we want to add some, you know, who's going to be the attendees to this meeting. So I'm going to go ahead and say Megan, and then that's one internal user, but we're also going to add somebody you know, from a different organization as well to look at that experience. So I'm going to just do my guest user zero, which is a test Gmail account. I've then gone ahead and added the subject, which the subject is quite useful because it will be used later on for the meeting invite after everyone selected the times that they can meet. And then I just add a body to the email as well. So at this point, we're ready to add a poll into our email. So to be able to do that on the ribbon at the top right, all we need to do is select new meeting poll. And then it brings up a panel on the right hand side for find time. And now we need to go ahead and select some times that we want our attendees to vote on. So first of all, we can choose the duration of the meeting. I'm just going to leave it as default 30 minutes. You can choose whether or not it wants to pick times outside of work hours. And then you can select the time zone, which again, I'm just going to leave as default a specific time. And then at the bottom here, we can choose which days we're looking for availability. I'm going to choose February 18th. And then from there, it's going to show all the different availability that it knows of. And we can see there's some color coding going on here. We've got two green and one gray. And really what that's showing is that it understands the availability for myself understands it for Megan because she's in my company and I can see her calendar or the system can. But because we've also got a Gmail account on here, the availability is unknown. And to see that in a bit more detail, I can select availability group here. And now it really shows us who's available and who's not, or if the availability is unknown. And there's more, you know, kind of color codes to this. If I change this to time, we can now see this red, which means busy or purple that means tentative, for example. But let's just go back to availability and we're gonna select some times. So we're gonna do 9.30 and we're gonna choose 11 here. And then we're gonna just choose two o'clock. So we've got a few different options in the morning and one in the afternoon. And then we're just gonna go ahead and hit next. 
we are now presented with some poll settings. So first up, we got location and Teams meeting. I'm gonna go ahead and I do want this to be a Teams meeting. So in location, I'm just gonna put Teams and then you can go ahead and choose whether or not you automatically want a Teams meeting added to your meeting invite once everyone's gonna to come to a consensus of what time works for them. You then have quite a few different poll settings. So first of all, we've got notify me about poll updates. So anytime one of your attendees completes a poll and votes, you're then gonna get an email just telling you about it and you can go review what's happened. Next up, we've got schedule when attendees reach consensus. And this is awesome. What this allows us to do then is once everyone's voted or all the required attendees is voted, it's automatically gonna create a new meeting event for us and send it out. And because we've got Teams selected above, it's also gonna add that Teams meeting. You might be asking, well, what happens if people choose multiple times? And that's a good question. Well, it's gonna go ahead and choose the earliest time and send that out. Next up, we have the ability to hold selected times on my calendar. What that's then gonna do is put a tentative calendar invite to all the different times we have below. So all those free times on Thursday, February 18th. That means hopefully nobody's gonna schedule over it. But then once the meeting invite's actually been sent out, all the polls been canceled, let's go, go ahead and actually remove all of those holds from my calendar. We then have the ability just to lock the poll for attendees. So they can't add more attendees or they can't add more times to this poll. We then can choose whether or not you know, find time sends it out in the language that I'm using find time, or it's just gonna default to English. And then we can go ahead and choose whether or not we wanna require attendees to verify their identity so that somebody just anonymous can't go ahead and vote on our poll. And then once you're ready and you've got all the poll settings set to how you want them, you can just go ahead and choose add to email. And now that's done, we can then see on the right hand side, you know, you're done. I could go ahead and edit the poll if I want to go change something after the fact here. But on the left hand side, in our actual body of our email, we can now see that the poll has been added. So you know, you're invited to a meeting by me, here are a few time slots. So let's go ahead and send this email out. And now that meeting's been sent, we can pop over to our calendar here. And what we can see is we now have three holds for the meeting times that we just sent out within this poll. And what it's done is it's used just the subject line of our email and it's given me a nice link so I could go have a look at you know, how the poll's getting on or update the times or whatever it might be. So now we're at this stage, let's go ahead and dive over and look at one of the attendees and see what their experience looks like. So now we're here in Megan's inbox and we've got the email that I just sent with the meeting poll. And all Megan needs to do is just click here where we've got the when free options. And what that's gonna do is bring up a new web page, bringing us into the find time voting page. At this point, you, know, you can see the time zone that we're in and the free options that I proposed. So the way this works is that on the find time poll, as Megan or as any other attendee, they can choose you know, what times do they prefer? Are they available at a time or does that time not work for them? Then on the right hand side, they can see all the other people that have gone ahead and voted. So at this point, you know, we can see that me as the actual organizer of this meeting, I'm free at any of these times because I've <laughs> selected them. But then on my guest, they've all got question marks because my guest hasn't responded. So if we're Megan, we can go ahead and go, you know what? I love an early morning meeting, so I'm gonna prefer the time at 9.30 a.m. I'm also free at 11, but then I'm not free at 2 p.m. So at this point, you know, Megan has chosen all the different votes that she wants. There are a few other things because they didn't lock this down. You know, if she wants to choose another time, Megan could go ahead and do propose another time. And also on the right hand side, could go ahead and add more attendees as well. But for this case, we're just gonna go ahead and do, you know, she's preferring 9.30 a.m. 11 also works, but 2 p.m. is a no-go. And then we're gonna go ahead and choose vote. And because of our poll options, I do get an email saying that somebody has voted. So we can see here that, you know, an attendee has voted. In this case, it's Megan. And I can quickly see what the different votes are. So Megan's preferred time was 9.30. 
so on and so forth. I could choose at this point, you know, if I wasn't really too worried about the other attendees, I could just go ahead and schedule it and it will go forth and do that for me. So I can have the option to do this manually myself, but we want to do it automatically. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and just dive over to our guest user and go through the votes as well. Okay, so we're now in Gmail on our guest user, so a user that isn't within our company. What we're going to do is we're going to load the email up. Again, we can see the meeting poll from find time. So I'm just going to choose the options here for the times. And what's it going to do is going to be a little bit different than last time. Because I'm not logging in for a you know, Office 365 account, it doesn't quite know who I am. So it's asking me for just to select you know, which attendee am I? So in this case, we're my guest user zero. So let's go ahead and select that. And now we're in a position where it looks very similar to when Megan was voting. But now we can see that, you know, again, the organizer has everything available. But then I can also see you know, when Megan is available. So she prefers 9.30, 11 she's free, and 2 p.m. she can't do. So at this point, I can say, you know what? Yep. I'm happy with 9.30, I'm also happy with 11, but you know, as Megan's not available at 2 p.m., there's no point in me saying that I'm available as well, so I'm just going to close that one and put it as no as well. And at that point, I'm just ready, I'm going to go ahead and vote. And now if we go back to my inbox as the organizer, we can see we've got a couple of emails. So firstly, we got an email saying that, you know, another attendee has voted, so you know, the guest account here has said that they're available or not available at the following times. But then this is a little bit different. We now got another email saying, congratulations, your poll has reached a consensus and it's gone ahead and booked in that meeting for 9.30 on Thursday. So that's pretty awesome. We didn't have to do anything for that. No more backwards and forward emails. So let's go ahead and look at our calendar. So if we dive over to that, what we can now see is that all those holds have gone and instead of the 9.30 being a hold, it's now actually a meeting. It's got the subject of the original email that we sent out. It's got all of our required attendees and it's also got a Microsoft Teams meeting right for us. So yeah, I could come into this now, add an agenda or anything else I need to do, but really that's all there is to it. Hopefully, you can see that that really can simplify how you start organizing these larger meetings or meetings when you're going across multiple companies. So if you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful, make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll see you soon for another video.